A logarithm-based and analog computer calculator is shown here designed using three ideal op-amps. We want to show that if this circuit is properly biased, then output voltage is proportional to base 10 logarithm of scaled version of input voltage. So it's effectively a base 10 logarithm calculator. Okay, so let's do this quickly. Uh, we make the assumption that the positive and negative supply voltages for op-amps are properly connected so that op-amp 1, 2, and 3 in this circuit are in linear region of operation and not saturated. So virtual short, as a result, is valid for each op-amp, meaning that voltage at positive input terminal is the same as voltage at negative input terminal. So hence, for example, for op-amp 1, the positive terminal has 0 volt connected to ground, so negative terminal is also at 0 volt, so here is 0 volt. Okay, so we want to find V out. But this op-amp is clearly in inverting amplification mode because you can see that positive terminal is grounded and negative terminal is connected to branches of resistors. So uh, this is inverting amplifier. To get to V out, I need to get to this node, which is voltage of this node, which is Vx. Now, this second op-amp obviously is a buffer, uh, meaning that it doesn't do anything in terms of just, uh, just passing the voltage with a gain of 1. So Vx is here, which is connected to negative input terminal. So negative input terminal is Vx. And because of mutual short, the positive input terminal should also be Vx. So this node is Vx volt. OK, so now the next move. So let me just write it here so that it's clean. Vx and Vx. OK, so now that we know this node is Vx at the base of this BJT transistor number 2, let's say this is T2 transistor 2, and let's say this is transistor 1, bipolar junction transistor T1. Now, these guys, uh, they have uh, a base emitter voltage, VBE2, and uh, plus minus base emitter voltage, VBE1, for the first transistor. Okay, so I can write a simple KVL. So let me change the color so that it's clear. From Starting from 0, I can move through this route and get to vx at the base of the second transistor and write a simple kvl or kirchhoff voltage law that says starting from zero and then by subtracting the base emitter one voltage drop and then by adding the base emitter two voltage i should get to vx okay this is good so let's refer to this as equation number two uh, one Okay, so that's one. Now, if I change the color to back to uh, original color, we know that for, let's say, the, uh, the base emitter voltage and the current of, let's say, the roughly the collector current of the transistor, roughly. So if this transistor, say, has I1, and uh, let me write it here so that it's easier to see. If this transistor has I1 as the collector current, and if this transistor has I2, as collector current, roughly we can say, so approximately, let me put it here, approximately we can say voltage of base emitter of transistor is eta, which is the uh, ideality factor of transistor, times Vt or thermal voltage, Kt over Q, times natural logarithm or ln of um, the collector current roughly, which is um, should be effectively emitter current, but emitter and collector, assuming beta is pretty large for transistor, is the same roughly. So let's say I of collector divided by the saturation current of transistor IS. Okay, so um, for silicon transistors, eta is, uh, generally speaking, eta or ideality factor is a number between uh, 1 and 2, but for uh, for the uh, silicon junction transistor, this is closer to 2, but it is in general between 1 and 2. So, but we don't care about that, uh, the exact value of eta, just for now, consider it as it is, and Vt as it is. Um, Vt is just uh, Kt over Q, again, we don't care about the absolute value of Vt at, in, for, for this conversation, and that's the thermal voltage. Now, I'm going to substitute equation 2 in 1, so using 1 and 2, I can say Vx is uh, VBE2, so 
eta vt, natural logarithm of ic2 or i2, the collector, the current of the second transistor collector, i2 over is, and substituting for negative vb1 minus eta vt, and then i1 over is. Okay, so now what I can do is I can say, continuing this, I can say Vx therefore is equal to eta Vt ln. And the nice thing is now I2 over Is divided by I1 over Is, Is cancel out. So that's why the sensitivity to at least thermal variation coming from saturation current disappears. So there you go. Now the nice thing is, I know that this node, this node is zero volt. Now I can compute the current that is going through R1, but the nice thing is, if I change the color so that you can see it, the nice thing is this current is the same as I1. So this current is the same as I1 because nothing can go or come out of the uh, input terminal of an ideal op amp because it has effectively or practically infinite impedance. So therefore I can say I know I1 is simply the V in minus zero, so V in divided by R1 because across R1 we only have V in and then zero volt. So I'm going to substitute for that. For I2 it just requires a little bit of a, uh, observation, practical observation. For R2 on one side we have 10 volt. On the other side take a look VBE or voltage of base emitter of BJ2 transistors usually on the order of 0.5 to point, let's say 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 volt. So on one side we have ground. If you notice that it's as if we go down by say nominal 0.7 volt, nominal, not exactly. So we get to, effectively we get to negative 0.7. So for VBE2 we go up again by something around 0.7, maybe 0.6, maybe 0.8. So effectively this node or Vx is somewhere in the vicinity of say approximately between negative 0.1 to say point, po positive 0.1 volt. So these values are on the order of 100th of 10 volt. That is on the other side. So basically for this resistor R2, for this resistor R2, on one side we have 10 volt, on the other side we just have something on the order of very close to zero, so close to zero. Therefore, because it's literally the actual value of it is literally one hundredth of the 10 volt which is on the other side, we can approximate very well that, practically speaking, I2, true that it is uh, 10 volt minus Vx divide by R2, but practically since Vx is nearly zero or much smaller than, so let me put it this way, uh, since Vx is much much smaller than 10 volt, we can say is effectively 10 over R2. So as a result I'm going to substitute and write that Vx is roughly eta vt ln i2 is 10 over r2 and i1 is v in over r1. Okay, so let me change the color back to what it was. Now, the nice thing is, uh, so in summary what I got is uh, I got Vx is roughly or approximately eta Vt ln of R1 over R2 times 10 over Vn. Okay, we can do one very quick trick. This is the same as writing negative eta Vt because I introduce a negated version, so I need to flip the numerator denominator inside the natural logarithm 
So I'm going to write it log E just instead of LN, just for the sake of visualizing the next action. But R1 over R2 becomes R2 over R1. V 10 over V becomes V over 10. Okay, as the last step, now we found Vx. So this is the Vx, this node, right at the input of the inverting amplifier. For the inverting amplifier, it's very easy. Uh, we know that V out is just minus the sum, the series of these two resistors divided by 100k. Uh, otherwise, if you don't agree with that, that's a well-known uh, fact, but we can just simply write a simple KCL here, knowing that nothing can go through the input terminal of ideal op amp because of its uh, near practically infinite input impedance. So we can write a KCL at this node in the sense that we can write Vx minus zero divided by 100k is the same thing, is equal to, should be equal to zero minus V out divided by it's the series of these two resistors, which is 43.43k. Uh, .43 which as a result, it gives us the same thing as, it, as we expected. V out over Vx, or let's say V out is equal to minus 43 minus 43.3 divided by 100, which is minus 0 0.4343 Vx. This is equation, so let's name this as equation, let's name this here as equation three. And so let's name this here as equation three. Let's name this here as equation four. Now, the nice thing is, so this thing as equation four. The nice thing is now combining these two equations, so combining three and four, I get a very interesting outcome. So I'm going to substitute for Vx in four from three, and I'm going to write out, write V out, the negative sign cancel the negative sign. So as a result, I get V out is roughly 0 0.4343 eta Vt, so eta Vt, and then log E, or logarithm based uh, natural number r2 over r1 v in over 10. okay so one interesting observation is this number this is actually uh, log e base 10 so this is uh, eta vt log e base 10 and then the rest of it is just log so Logarithm, the rest, which is R2 over R1, V in over 10. But the fact that we have here log E base 10 times log something else base E, this is a well-known uh, algebraic relationship that we can write it, logarithmic relationship, that eta Vt then become log, the combination of these two things effectively become log base 10, R2 over R1, let's say R2 over 10 R1, times Vn. That's exactly what we wanted to prove, that the output of this interesting circuit, V out, is just equal to a, a sort of a scaled version of the base 10 logarithm of a scaled version of Vn. So we proved that this is really an analog uh, calculator or computer that is able to compute the uh, base 10 logarithm of the applied input voltage. I hope that this is helpful.